And once we climb through the, uh, the yellow band, we do a hard left traverse, gaining not so much height. I mean, it's a very gradual grind all the way across left to the very obvious black spur on the left-hand side of the face, which comes down to actually meet the yellow band lower down. That's called the uh, Geneva Spur, uh, so-called after the Swiss in 1952, who first uh, pioneered the route up to the South Coal. And what we do, we climb through the yellow band. It looks very, very black this year, i.e. it's not much snow on it. We climb through the yellow band, then right at the top, on the left-hand side, you can see just some very thin wisps of snow going right to left. And that's, uh, that's the traverse line which will take us through to the South Coal which is just out of sight. You can't quite see the South Coal. And the South Coal represents our highest camp on this side of Everest at 7,950 metres. is our camp four, and it's our launching post uh, up to the summit. And that will be our last night before we, we uh, make a, a summit attempt. So, um, so from camp two here, it's a, it's a very, very good overview of, uh, of the next well, pretty much 10 days worth of effort going gradually up and down the mountain. So from here, what we do, we'll, tomorrow we'll drop back down to base camp and let our bodies rest. Then we come back up to this, to this camp. From this camp we go up to camp three and we spend a night at camp three. And then we come all the way back down to base camp and we have a big long rest, maybe five, six, seven days. And then fingers crossed we get, get a good forecast from the uh, British Met Office. We come back up, we spend a day here resting, up to camp three, then we we'll, follow the route I've just described across the Yellow Band and Geneva Spur to, to the South Coal and our Camp 4 and then we'll leave late that night for the, for the summit.